Alex Saar in red will jump it up with Eric Mika, the second-year player for Ignite, and Saar has won the tip. So the Wildcats will get the ball first. In the second year in a row, a lot of these scouts are here to see somebody playing against Ignite. Early on inside, they go to Jordan Usher from Atlanta, Georgia, played his college ball at USC, Georgia Tech. Actually spent time in the summer league most recently with the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, he's a really smart player, plays very well off the basketball. Ron Holland, an early turnover. So Ron Holland, Matas Bazelis, those are the guys projected to go number one and number two in the upcoming NBA draft. They're part of the new prospects who have joined Ignite, deciding to skip college, turn pro, develop their skills here with Ignite. The fans here have a lot to, to cheer for. Both of these two young men are very, very talented. Now here's the best prospect for the Perth <laughs> Wildcats, Alex Saar. He played with Overtime Elite last season, has now decided to join the next star program it's kind of similar to nba g league ignite where players forego college they come over learn how to be a pro this is the first time a next star program player has played with Perth. so sar is basically trying it out for the first time yeah and he's a real talent i mean he defensively he challenges shots he can score around the rim he's a complete basketball player and for the second year in a row Ignite has to play against a talented big guy with versatile skills. Now, when you say second year in a row, that's because Victor <laughs> Wembenyama got on the map. Oh, man. <laughs> in these preseason games, his French team came over, played two games against Scoot Henderson, who was the man for Ignite. Who will be the guy to make a name for himself tonight? But, you know, that's part of this Ignite program is starting the season off with challenges like this to get their fans excited and to let their young players know what they have to be up against. Here's Buzella, six foot eight. He has all the skills to be one of the best NBA players. Size can shoot. Here's London Johnson, his runner off the rim, and a strong rebound pulled down by Saar. Now the Perk Wildcats, they like to get up and run. They are athletic, so they can compete against this Ignite team. Again, they're vet and they're veteran players, so they know how to play in these types of situations, and they've been playing together for a minute. Three ball goes for Ty Webster, played his college ball at Nebraska. He's kind of that combo guard. He likes to get downhill, but he showed the stroke right there. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I know uh, Jason was worried about with this young Ignite team, them coming out on a fast start, and that's why I think Jenkins is in the game and, and Eric are in the game to kind of settle the young guys down and be the anchor. So you're talking about number 23, John Jenkins, and number 12, Eric Mika. They were veterans. They played on this Ignite team last year. I talked to them. They said, of course we wanted to come back. We have families. We love playing in America. They had the option to play overseas. We want our families to be able to watch us at a normal time here in America. But a turnover now for all for Perth Wildcats. Here it goes. A one-handed one hammer. And Alex Saar soaring through. He is so explosive. You know, it's one thing, John, to be tall. It's another thing to be athletic and tall. John Jenkins, the best shooter in the G League. And nothing but net on his first three ball attempt. I tell you, that's what they want from him, to give him steadiness in the backcourt, not just to shoot the ball, John, but also to initiate and help run the offense. A block is called on Eric Mika. You know, one of the other things, you know, this Ignite team has not had a lot of practice time all together. So it's one thing about first game. It's another thing when you haven't had a chance to practice as much because of different sort of injuries and things like that. David O'Quarra checking into the game for the first time, but the first Wildcats, number 35 in red, and a travel against Saar. Now, Sars, another guy, he's only been with this Wildcats team for about a month. Talk to head coach John Rilly. He said he is a very coachable young star, wants to distribute the ball. They're excited to see what he can do. The scouts like him. They like his personality. And here's the other thing, that coaches like to see young players that communicate with their uh, with their teammates and work to make their teammates better. And Sar is one of those guys that has the ability to do that. Backdoor cut, Jenkins lays it in. He's got all five points for Ignite. Well, 
great back cut there, and that's the veteran that he is, and that's what he's going to be asked to do as the season progresses. The aggressive with Holland jumps the passing lane, pokes it away. 16 seconds on the shot clock for the Wildcats. We're going to do a lot of talking about Holland because he's a real talent. He's very athletic, smart. Bryce Cotton misses his three. Jenkins with a rebound. He's looking to push the pace. Holland up ahead with contact. No, no, they do call the whistle. And here's one of the most talented players on the floor. Ron Holland out of Dallas, Texas. He actually had verbally committed to go to the University of Texas. I asked him earlier, I said, why did you decide to skip college and come turn pro? He said, you know, their roster was in flux. I didn't know what it was going to look like coming back. He felt like he'd have a better opportunity to become a pro here with Ignite than go the college route. Well, I think a lot of young people are taking a look at that. In Duncanville, I recruited two kids out of Duncanville. It's a very pro-Texas area. So it took a whole lot of guts to say no to the Longhorns living in Duncanville. Believe me. But uh, yeah, I think he made a really smart move just in what he wants to do in talking to him and his own personal development and what has happened out of this Ignite program. Ball is tipped away. Ignite with the steal. Down by three here. We just started early on in this first quarter. I think the young man with the ball, Johnson, is going to be a real key to this Ignite team because he's got to take that point position and really initiate and run it. This is what scouts want to see. They want to see can he improve his jump shot, his three-pointer off the mark there. Usher in transition. He'll pull up, and he left it short. And a block is called against Jordan Usher as Holland looking to get aggressive. Let's talk about Johnson for a minute because so much of any team comes from his point guard and when you've had the best one in the whole country for a whole year, you know, the expectations. But London, they're trying to put weight on him. They have not worked him as hard because they didn't want him to burn the, the calories and the weight that they were trying to put on him and uh, had him do more film work and hope that he picks up running this ball club. And early timeout called by Jason Hart, head coach for NBA G League Ignite. And we will go to break. An early three-point lead for the visiting Perth Wildcats. But we are just getting started here in Henderson, Nevada. This was his idea. Coming off of last season when they got all the attention with the team playing the exhibition games against the French team, Victor Wembanyama, having his coming out party against Scoot Henderson making some calls around the world trying to decide who wanted to play with the quality of basketball in Australia. The Perth Wildcats, they got the call and they said, oh, we would love to take that opportunity to showcase the talent that we have. So a lot of credit, Sharif Abdur-Rahim, for making these two games possible. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a continuance of that because I think teams want to come in here again to see how good they are, to see their talent and to showcase it. And to give their kids a chance to come to America and especially a place like Las Vegas and be able to play in this environment, I think is something that they look to do. A guy like Jordan Usher, right? You know he wants to play in the NBA. Yeah. But if you can tell him, you can come here, we can get you in front of NBA scouts and showcase your skills, making moves like this, yeah. that was filthy. Big time spin move, he kept his balance, was able to finish at the rim. I was told 160 NBA scouts and executives were credentialed for the game today. You always give me these large numbers. and I That's what I was told. Me, uh, who told you that? The guy at the parking lot? The guy who actually had to do the credentials. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot of people here. It is a lot of people here. Final minute of and play in the ballgame. watching too, right? 100%. Yeah. Johnson, free throw jumper, left it strong. Amansa, another tip out, keeping things alive. Johnson gets by two men, met by a wall of defenders. Almanza batting it around. A third chance because of Almanza underneath the basket. Now you got to reward the big man. And he traveled with it. Look, look at how Holland's telling him, shoot the ball, man. Shoot the ball. <laughs> I, I, I really like that young man. I, I tell you what, Ron Holland is a special player. He is... He would be high on my board. Final seconds in this one. Dante Russo Nance 
will just dribble things out. And that'll do it. In the exhibition, this NBA G League Fall Invitational, it's NBA G League Ignite with a 124-105 win over the Perth Wildcats. What a start to the preseason for Ignite. It is. It's a great start. Um, it, and it gives you something to build upon. I mean, they made some things that they got to correct and work on. And all, but there's a lot of things that were very, very positive. And now, and here's the thing. The game Friday, I think, will be even more telling because now the Perth has something to game plan for. Now you got to see how you handle after you've been game planned for. Ron Holland the second. The prospect, the rookie. He's our leading scorer tonight. 23 points. He was a man on a mission. No, he's a man that can play. He can just flat play. I, and, I, and I don't, when I, yeah, it was on a mission, but I think he will play like this. I think we will see him play like this with that kind of energy every day because that's just his DNA, you know. Just like I think Smith, you'll see him play with a certain, you know, um, Sané, I think you'll see. I mean, I think certain guys had that DNA. You know, Brazil, I think he has the DNA. I think so. It's not a one-time deal where they get up to play like this. I just think that that's the way they play. All right, the player of the game, Ron Holland, is standing by with Gianna. little bit of nerves coach said he'd let you guys play through those what does it mean to coach for coach to do that for you guys for your confidence I see that coach sees a lot in us and knowing that we he, we, he here to uh, make us uh, get better every single day I trust myself and I trust him we've been we've been in the gym every single day and I trust that coach did a great job of preparing us for this game what did you do mentally to get prepared for this game because there's a lot of pressure on you people talking about where you might be drafted what did you do to get mentally prepared uh, they took us through a whole a whole session of things uh, stretching shooting I did a whole I got a whole lot of shots before the game the night before the game it was just, that's what I'm used to doing you know, just preparing to, preparing for the game after a game like this what do you feel like the next game is going to be like for you guys same thing but even more dominant all right thanks good game back to you guys all right John appreciate that Ron Holland 23 points in his pro debut now yes this was an exhibition game but this is the future. This is what we can expect from Ignite. We will have one more exhibition game against the Perth Wildcats on Friday. What was most impressive for you as we wrap up this first game here? How well they played together, how unselfish they were, and their talent overall, or their ability to play the game of basketball. Pass, shoot, drive, defend, rebound. I, I was really blown away with just how talented this group was. If Ignite is clicking this early, how much fun can this season be? Oh, it's going to be fun because they got easy bats. They really, they get out, they run. They have the skill set to get out and get easy baskets. You know, they're not a dribble, dribble, dribble team. They're a run, pass team and score. We appreciate you joining us here tonight here in Henderson, Nevada. As NBA G League Ignite gets the win, 124-105 over the Perth Wildcats. For my partners, Perry Clark, Gianna Hearn, I'm John Triffin saying so long. Have a good night. We'll see you back here on Friday night. Now, this game is so important. We have 160 NBA scouts and executives in the building. They are looking at all the top-level talent on the court. And Jason Hart is a man who's got to get a lot of credit for assembling this roster. Not only does he have to develop guys here with Ignite, he also has to win. Yeah, and, and his job is very complicated because kids come here to develop, to get a shot at the NBA, and he's delivered on that. So you got to kind of get that part going. Also, they want you to win, to put people in the building, and to get that excitement, so he has to do that. And so there's a lot on his shoulders, and he has handled it, I think, exceptionally well. Jenkins throws it up at the rim, gets the oh, and Jenkins. one. Jenkins picking up where he left off last season. He is a scoring machine. But the thing I like in watching this young ball club from a coach's perspective, they play together. I like the way they congratulate each other. They go over, they slap guys on the back, and the chemistry, they, they got enough skill as they develop. They're going to get better, but their ability to play with each other and enjoy playing with each other, like last year's team did. I mean, they had some injuries and some setbacks, but they enjoy playing with each other. G League Ignite has eight guys who are prospects who will, who 
will become draft eligible. Jason Hart has never had a roster with that many Some prospects. coaches have never had eight guys in their whole career that were draft eligible. <laughs> Playing no good, poked around, and pulled away by Ron Holland. Jason Hart said, with a new set of dreams, that's what motivates me. I want to get these guys to where they've been dreaming about since when they were little kids. Exactly. But bottom, that's the shot that Johnson has to be able to hit. That mid-range with a little bump, that's where the weight has to come on. That's where the maturity has to show because he's physical enough to take that bump and still knock it down. Usher, his three-pointer, too strong. Good rebound there by Oquera. Bryce Cotton, he has not hit a shot from the field. Tipped around, Jenkins comes away. Here's Matas Bezelis. Objective go either one or two in the upcoming NBA draft, and he misses his shot at the rim. He has to become comfortable in asking for the basketball. He's got that kind of talent, and it's hard sometimes when you come new to a situation to ask for the basketball because you really just try to fit in. Here's Saar. That one just rims out, but another strong rebound by Oquera. Cotton hits his first three. Bryce Cotton, a four-year player out of Providence. Can really shoot the basketball. Uh, and he's really good off the bounce. A lot of guys can shoot it, catch and shoot. He does a really good job off the bounce. An offensive foul, no bucket. But just talking about Bryce Cotton, he's a three-time NBL MVP, 2018, 2020, and 21. He has played his entire Australian career with Perth. And I talked to him before the game. He said, you know, everywhere I've been, I've never been the man. But now all of a sudden, I'm the guy people look at. And he goes, it's an interesting position. I've never been the star. He goes, but I love it. I love the fan support I get in Perth. I tell you, I, I used to tell the players all the time, heavy is the head that wears the crown. When you are the guy and everybody's coming to see you, that's a whole different dynamic. And those guys that have had to wear that and operate with that and still be successful. They do a lot of credit. A three-point lead for the visiting Wildcats. For the first time, Tyler Smith now on the floor, along with Ethan Almanza from Spain. Kick out is to Jenkins. Four on the shot clock. Pull up jumper. Fails it. John Jenkins, a hot start. Got those fresh legs, baby. <laughs> Bulls ignite within one as we approach six minutes to play here in this first quarter. Cotton is really good off the ball screen. Corey, Re Corey Webster, he's a professional scorer, missing his first shot. Got to pick him up in transition. Jenkins, you know he's feeling it. You know, and it's a new role for him. And he's embracing it. And he seems like, if you talking to him and we watching him practice, he seems like he really likes it and he's very comfortable with it. Here's Cotton. Working the pick and roll, the kick out. Kyle Zunick, a little too strong, pushing the back, getting away with it was Andrew, but Ignite come away. Here's London Johnson in the open floor, takes the bump, and he will get a trip to the free throw line. But again, that's as the season progresses, he's got to, instead of going there for, for, uh, for two shots, he's got to make that a three-point play. One hard stop, explode up, and I say that because it's going to come. And I think our fans are going to see that development in his game because he's working hard with it. Think about the development he went through last year. Playing behind Scoot Henderson, the number three overall pick in the recent NBA draft. That's, a mental, the that's a mental development. That's a mental development. To watch Scoot, see what he went through, to see Scoot like we used to see him after games, come out here to shoot and, 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 and work on his game and work on things that didn't go for him and see the pressure. You know, and they're both from Atlanta. They both come out of a great program. And so, you know, they were very close. I think he mentally grew a lot. Now, physically, he's got to take that next step and, and do, be able physically to do some of the things Scoot was able to do. Not comparing him to Scoot, but that NBA guards are able to do as far as finishing around the round. Jason Hart said the game has slowed down for London Johnson, and now he wants to see him take the next level in terms of his decision-making as the point guard. Zunick now running the point for Perk. Here's Webster, his pull-up jumper, too strong. And here comes London Johnson, dribbling with his head up. Knight's been through the defense. He's trying to find somebody now. Goes back inside to the paint, takes the bump and finishes. No call. That's 
that's what you're looking that, for. Coach. That's what I'm saying. And the fact that he's constantly doing it, you can tell it's been put in his head that that's the step you have to be able to make. Ignite now with a three-point lead after the quick start by the Wildcats. Ignite, they're switching everything on D. Harris high off the window and it goes. Michael Harris last year was a rotational player for the Wildcats. He's the best shooter on the team. They're expecting more from him this season. Inside, Bob Carson A. His first shot off the bench goes. That's your guy. That's your guy. I think he is the sleeper <laughs> for this Ignite team. Not many people are talking about him, but on Tuesday, in practice, when all the scouts were here, he was the guy who impressed everybody the most. He was the one who put on the show. Babakar Sané. Remember that name. Well, you were high on him last year, and he's extremely talented. You know, he's starting to learn how to play at this level, at this intensity against these types of players. But without question, he's got the talent and ability. So Webster now running the point for the Wildcats. Working the pick and roll. And on the roll, that's Jack Andrew. He'll be hacked and earn a trip to the free throw line for two shots. You see this Wildcat team, they like the set, they like the spacing, they like to the set the ball screens and roll. So what winds up happening, the night gets caught in some mismatches. And with this young group, especially in the first game, to be able to handle the switches. They said that was not a shooting foul. They were getting out on the block. That was Tyler Smith. And thrown away, Hiram Harris. Now, Hiram Harris, he just landed here in Vegas on Monday. He was playing in the World Cup with New Zealand. John really said, I'm not sure how many minutes he's going to be able to go, but we would like to see him play. Still getting his legs underneath him. Got it out of bounds. It'll stay here with Ignite. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Now, this is the second unit off the bench for Ignite. So we're getting our first look at some of these young prospects. Tyler Smith, Ethan Almanza from Spain. Here's Admon Gilder. He's one of the young pros who comes in here as a, ver as a veteran alongside Jeremy Pargo. Pargo is a guy that's being asked to take Pooh Jetta's role last year. Uh, to kind of be the veteran, get people involved, give them a spot. Webster's three off the mark. Here comes Gilder the other way. He's got numbers. Pargo, the touch pass to Smith, and he is fouled. Great fast break right there. You see Pargo, he could have taken it, but he got it to the young kid, trying to get him some encouragement. Ignite offense starting to click here in this first quarter. They've got a three-point lead under three minutes to play here in this first. Media timeout on the floor. We will step aside, come back to the Dollar Loan Center after this. Welcome back inside the Dollar Loan Center. John Schriffen alongside Perry Clark. We welcome in the third member of our crew and send it over to Gianna Hearn. Hey, guys, I'm here with two of the most influential basketball content creators, Jesser and Y2K. Why did you guys come out here? We'll start with you, Jesser. Yeah. You have so many followers. Why is it important <laughs> to bring Ignite to them? I just wanted to come out here to see all the new generation of basketball players. A lot of these guys are going to go to the league, a lot of projected top picks. So I really wanted to meet them, see what they were up to, and try to get some videos with them. And then also just, I haven't seen an NBA game in so long. This is the first one. So I wanted to be there for it. Millions and millions of followers combined with you two. Y2K, you are right here in Vegas. You're a local. What's it like having this type of talent in your backyard? Uh, honestly, it's beautiful. It's like I don't have to travel too far to get a good quality <laughs> game. I like it. It's all for the love of the game. So I don't necessarily necessarily see it as, okay, NBA, G League, it's all basketball to me, so I love basketball, so I'm here, I'm watching. And Jesser, if you could pick the number one pick right now, who are you picking from tonight? Matis. I got his jersey on. I gotta pick him. You heard it right here, guys. We'll go back to you. All right, Johnny, good stuff. Back to live action here. Final minutes here in this first quarter. This is the NBA G League Fall Invitational, the first of two games 
in this exhibition showcase between the Perth Wildcats. If you're unfamiliar with them, they're basically the one of the best teams in Australia. They're on the west coast of Australia. Essentially, it's like the Los Angeles Lakers of Australia. That's how big they are. Ten-time NBL champs. They have a tremendous following, a tremendous history. And you know when you talk to people about basketball in Australia, that, that's what everybody talks to. When I was in New Orleans, Randy Livingston uh, was played there, and that's all he ever talked about was, was the talent, the way that they were followed and everything. So they are exciting. they got a good team. How incredible is it to see the talent level all across the world, and now we're seeing American players choosing to skip college and go to Australia to become pros to make that their path to come to the NBA. Well, it's all about figuring out the best way to be, uh, the better your talent. Bob Carsone with the offensive rebound. Argo gets his man in the air, throws it up and throws it down. Tyler Smith, he's one of the young prospects who the scouts are really loving. He's got that smooth lefty jumper. You know, he's he's skilled and he knows how to play. He works with John Lucas a lot of times at over at his gym, where a lot of the better players from Houston play. And they're very, very high on him. There's Ethan Almanza with the block. At night, they're starting to click here as his first quarter's winding down, and Sané couldn't finish at the rim. I tell you what, John, I think that's where he's at his best, Sané, is in transition and running the floor. With that body and that size and his, and his athleticism and his explosiveness. Abakar Sané, six foot six. 233. So he's been hitting the weight room in the offseason. He is filling out. Nothing comes, but muscle. Comes from Senegal NBA Academy in Africa. He could be a good one. He was supposed to go to UCF, was recruiting him hard, and they didn't really know, I think, how good he was because they didn't get a chance to see him play. And the scouts from Team Ignite went over and they realized right away. And what did they say? It was over. <laughs> so Ben Henshaw fouled. He'll go to the free throw line in the bonus. Young player, no NBL experience. So talking to John really, head coach for the Perth Wildcats, he's really valuing these exhibition games because he also wants to see what he has with new players coming back. So many expectations for the Wildcats, seeing how a young guy like Ben Henschel can fit into the lineup. And, and, and John, the coaches are not really expecting execution to be the highest tonight, but it's the talent. They want to compare their talent level and see because this uh, first team has talent, you know, Ignite has talent, so they're trying to see uh, is my talent as good as what I think it is. And then we can clean up the execution. Inside they go to Almanza. One of the best international players, double teamed, still got it off, off the mark, and Armand Gilder is there to clean it up for night. Gilder is a really good player. When I was at South Carolina, we played against them at Texas a and He gave us fit. Big, strong guard, can post you, as well as not can Wildcats are using that pick and roll cross court passes, broken up by Almanza. Got the two on one, takes it himself, and finishes at the rim. Ethan Almanza, six foot ten from Spain. Last season he was the under 17 MVP. This past offseason, the under 18 MVP, the best young player two years in a row. They love his versatility. They know he needs to get stronger, but as he finished on the other end, that's the type of strength he's got to get where he can finish in traffic. Here's Almanza again going against Saar and throws it on his head. He thought Almanza, look out. That's the, that's the way you want your bigs to run. And I'll be honest with you, these bigs, right now are running as effective as the night big ran last year. Sar will set the screen. Mitchell now with the ball. Final seconds here in this first quarter. Sar trying to get it back. Shot clock winding down. That is blocked. Four seconds to play here in this first quarter. Pargo, he'll find Sané from three. Got it! Balakar 
Our son A beats the buzzer. And Ignite, they are clicking on all cylinders. They've got an 11-point lead after one. Clark, John Hearn, I'm John Triffin. We start this second quarter in this exhibition matchup between the Perth Wildcats, one of the best teams in Australia, taking on NBA G League Ignite, made up of young prospects and veteran pros. There's one of them, Tyler Smith. Last season played with Overtime Elite, was basically in the witness protection program because Overtime Elite, not many people saw them. Now he steps up the level of competition, and he's going to open some eyes here with Ignite. I think he's really skilled. He understands how to play and can shoot the basketball. He's got a real, real good mid-range game. Tyler Smith in 2021, his sophomore year in high school, he was one of the top five players in high school. Everyone was talking about him. He decided to make that switch to overtime elite, fell off the radar, and now all of a sudden, scouts are seeing him again, seeing him against high-level competition. You know, they always say is different. I mean, you know, you can be, especially in high school, you can be hot and people know who you are, and then all of a sudden, you know, you don't stay at that level or you go somewhere and people kind of forget and they get to the next bus. But I think a lot of times that helps them kids because they can get better in the dark and grow their game. And I think that you're going to see Smith, what happened to him last year, uh, uh, um, really, really help him in the long run. Pick and roll with Almanza. And he is blocked by Saar. Well, Saar is unquestionably a really good defensive player. Stripped away by Smith. Here comes Pargo in transition. Almanza, the kick out. Holland sets the feet. And Bryce Cotton, the best player for the Wildcats, back on the floor. In and out dribble. Usher. And it went off Almanza. So we'll stay here at the Wildcats. Nine seconds on the shot clock. You know what has impressed me so far with Ignite? Last year we talked about with them being young, the physicality. The physicality did not bother them defensively to offense. It bothered them offensively to their defense. People were able to get the ball in the paint and easily score off of them. So timeout on the floor. Ignite with a 12-point lead, their first exhibition game as a team. For Perth, their head coach, John Rilly, told me yesterday, he goes, we have seven new players. We actually have a roster spot available to import another American. So they're still trying to figure out who they're going to be when their regular season starts. But he said, we get a lot of guys who feel like they should be in the NBA. This is a great test for us to see how our guys match up against high-level talent. And again, what I said earlier, I mean, they really come to see the talent. And there's a big-time shot right there. Ben Henshaw showing you no fear out here. Sticks it with a man in his face. You know, Perth would not come all this way if they didn't think they could compete. And they didn't think that this would help them get better. You've been to Perth? No, I have not. Maybe me and you need to go out, out back and huh? Love to go. I hear Perth, Australia is one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's kind of like the San Diego of Australia. Do they have a roof, Chris? <laughs> Man, I gotta get to, I gotta get to, Everybody that knows me know I was gonna say that. I gotta get you on a surfboard in Perth, Australia. Here's Alex Saar hanging too strong. Henschel with another rebound, and Saar jams it home. Yeah, but I think this Perth team is a good basketball team, and I think they're gonna use these two games to really sharpen their skills and to see what they need to do to be able to, again, dominate. There's that veteran move by Jeremy Pargo shielding himself and finishes for two. I like when I, when I was hearing him talk earlier, he said, I know why I'm here. And coaches like the, their guys to understand what their roles are and what they need them to do. Saar one-on-one against Mika, the turnaround jumper left it short. The Wildcats with an early lead in the first quarter, but midway through, Ignite turned it to another level. And now here in the second quarter, with a 10-point lead inside, Tyler Smith, two more. You notice how Jason has now integrated 
the team. He's got some of the starters out there with some of the guys coming off the bench. Again, feeling out the best rotation and the best team chemistry. Bryce caught in the fourth jumper. Usher, free throw jumper off the offensive board, puts it in. Usher is a really good offensive player. He's the type of offensive player you don't have to call a play for him, and he still can wind up getting you 10, 12 points a game. Jason Hart said he recruited him at USC. Yeah. Very familiar to this Ignite team. He was one of those Atlanta players that was not afraid to travel. Ron Holland showing you the smooth jumper. That's what the scouts want to see at six foot six. They know he's intense. They know he can compete. What other skills does he show? As the runner goes for Webster. Hooked away by Saar, and he's got the steal for the Wildcats. Cotton, he'll push the pace, finding Usher. The up and under, the reverse, no good for Henschel. Holland with the leak out and throws it down with two hands. Holland really was a good transition. Saw went by, I just want to make sure he was okay. I just got to remember Ron Holland, how young he is. He just turned 18 years old. And John, he's a talent. I mean, you can look at I mean, he's got the poise. He plays with an understanding of what he's doing. And a lot of guys have talent and they just play. Other guys play with a purpose and they understand what they're doing and what they're trying to do. He has that kind of poise. Can you kind of put it into perspective? Someone who just turned 18 years old. Skipping college, becoming a pro, what does it take to make that transition from high school to the pro game? Well, the talent is, is there. Now it's the maturity and mentally understanding that you're playing against men, the physicality of it, how they're going to come at you, carrying yourself like a pro. You hear, you hear people in pro front offices always talk about, you know, he carries himself like a pro. He carries himself like a pro. Now people say, well, what does that mean? It's one of those things, it's like class, you know it when you see it. I mean, and so, you know, they have a respect for the game, they have a work ethic. They come out and they care about their teammates. And so that's the thing that allows guys to be able to get better. And it's the thing, it's the thing that builds championships, too. Eric Mika, he's the enforcer, bangs inside, puts it off the glass for a two more, a 12-point lead for Ignite. This ball moving by the Wildcats. There's Cotton. And he draws the whistle as he goes to the lane. Cotton is driving the ball a little bit more. Most of the footage I've seen on him, he's been one of these that backs you off and then knocks down the three. He had a great career at Providence and has really had success with Perk. Play here in this first half. Backdoor cut. Jenkins lays it in. At 10 points in that first quarter, continues out to his scoring. Bazellis off of his leg, got in the passing lane. 14 seconds on the shot clock for the Wildcats. Bazellis is, is looking like he's trying to feel his way through this right now. He's a real talented basketball player. One of the things that Rosellas will learn is when you have his offensive skills, you have to want and you have to demand the basketball sometimes. Cutting through the lane and finishing at the rim is Jack Andrew. It looks like right now he's just kind of playing to fit in. Here's Buzellas. He is bodied by O'Quara, and they force the turnover. The He's not playing like I'm the guy. You're going to have to come get me. You can't stop me. I'm really good. Webster with all kinds of time left the three short. Let's see what London Johnson does in terms of decision making. He gets bumped. And that's what people are going to do to him till he shows he can take the bump and still be able to finish at the rim. So one thing this team did, as opposed to other teams, they actually got an earlier start. 
This summer, they went to UCLA. They participated in the Rico Hines runs. That's basically where NBA players come in to the UCLA campus and just practice and scrimmage against these guys to get better. Well, Ignite played as a team against some of those NBA teams as Bruzelis. That's, that's, that's what he's got to do. He's, he's got to get in there, mix it up, and shoot it with confidence. Now, hey, I can do this, man. You're going to have to stop me. And that's what Ignite learned in those Rico Hines runs. Playing against NBA guys, they lost their first two games, but realized, you know what? We can play with these guys, too. Jealous skies for the rebound. He can push the pace at six foot eight. He's got all the skills. He's got the handle. He's got the shoot. Look at him breaking down his man. Step back jumper. In and out, but you can see his confidence building. It, it, he's, he's got it. He's got the ability. Now he's got to have the moxie to go with. That was nasty. The Euro gets to the off hand, Bryce Cotton. Bryce Cotton can score the basket. You love watching a guy that just knows how to score. Coach, you've been around the game for so long. We talk about guys stepping into the role, becoming the man, making the jump from high school. Who have you seen who's been able to do something like that? Well, you know, I was around the McDonald's game, and so a lot of those guys would come in. And from day one, you knew Magic Johnson was special, the way he just stepped up and wanted to take control. Larry Bird was one of those guys that just stepped up and said, put it on my shoulder that I'm going I'm to do that. And, and those guys were really special. But obviously, but Steph Curry was like that. Steph Curry went to Davidson and said, look, we're going, we're going to take you to the NCAA tournament and go far, and he handled it. And certain guys are not afraid of that. And it's not being afraid, but they have it in their DNA where they like that challenge. And I think that's what coaches look for and look at that goes beyond the stats. Ron Holland the second, he's a guy who's now stepping his game up, but the land at the other end, he's got seven points now. He's one of those guys who's not afraid of the bright lights. No. Another guy was Damon Stottlemyre. Damon used to tell you from Portland, there were no really big time players coming out of Portland. And he had to step up to show people that he could really play, and boy, could he play. Here's Holland, oh, with a crossover, step back to the three. Hey now, Ron Holland the second. That's why scouts love him. He's good. There's the Zealous getting his hand on it, trying to get the steal. It stays with Oquera. Webster gets downhill, missed it at the rim. And inside, finishing with the left is Jack Andrew. He's trying to force inside for the Wildcats. Jason Hart calling out the play, head coach for your NBA G League Ignite. He said he didn't want to install too many plays, just wanted to let the guys play free, have fun, as Holland is going to work here in this second quarter. Uh, that ain't give him a, t a technical for talking. And I think sometimes, I think that should have been more of a warning. You know, I mean, he, it's an exhibition, first game, in my opinion. I'm not criticizing the official. And I don't know exactly what he said, but sometimes you can. You know what happened? He went right over his coach. Jason Hart does what Jason Hart does. Coaching up young players, teachable moments. And what did Ron Holland say? I got you. Yeah. I'm good. That's what Ignite's about, right? It, 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 and they have the right guy running the program. I mean, Jason, his demeanor, the way he handles these guys and developing them. He just does an outstanding job. Blitz the, the ball as Oquera. Watch from behind. Stays with the Wildcats and the three rattles in for Dante Russo Nance. He's out of Oak Hill Academy. Chose to go the pro route his first minutes of the game. They had a few good players come out of Oak Hill Academy. In fact, you. In fact your old buddy, Corey Alexander. That's right. <laughs> Best. Shout out Corey Alexander, who's probably watching this game. He's a hoop, a what, hoop guy. And let me tell you, he could really play. Oh, oh, Corey could that. really oh, play. You know how I know he could really play? Every time we I wanted him at Georgia Tech. Every time, he's every time I go to Charlottesville, yeah. he's the mayor. Yeah. yeah. But he should have come. To, he was supposed to come to Georgia Tech and follow that guard that point guard tradition right there with Kenny Anderson, Mark, Mark Price, Stephon Marbury. But now the game has changed. 
with what Ignite has done here now in their fourth year, this team can change the entire basketball landscape. They've got eight prospects. Many people think there's a chance six, maybe eight of them could go in that first round. It's a possibility. Don't push that on these young guys. No, no, no. That's not, it's not pressure. No, no, no. But, but do they have the talent that at some point in time, could they have that many guys that are first rounders? At, yeah. it, it's the point not, is, this is the most talented team Ignite has ever had. Can't they? It, it is a very talented group, without question. And I'm a coach, you know, and, and what we try to do. And I tell you what, though, Jason Hart embraces that. He likes that. He likes that conversation. He likes to talk about it. He likes to challenge that. And to his credit, he's done a very good job. Blocked by Jenkins. Here's Bruzellis. He's calling for it in the corner. Going one-on-one against Blackstaff. Up and under. That's Bruzellis showing you the flair. That's what I'm talking about. Now he's starting to pick this thing up. The game is starting to open up. It feels like guys are starting to settle in. If this was a boxing match, probably about round three, round four, we've traded a few punches. Now we're ready to go. I don't care how good you think you are or you are. You always have some anticipation look at him right now going baseline finishing using his body finishing at the rim and so it, it with time it starts to come out and you start to explode and you start to let out but at first you say well maybe these guys are maybe better than i think maybe i'm not quite ready maybe and then all of a sudden you get out there and it starts to flow and you say yes i am so Ron Holland told me when they played in those Rico Hines runs in UCLA, when they were playing against basically the whole Raptors team, the whole Bulls team, he goes, those guys tie their shoes just like we do. We can play with them. And he said that was a huge confidence builder for the entire Ignite team. Here's Buzelis, drives by his man, the extra passes to Jenkins, and Jenkins is hacked. You can see this is a very unselfish team. Guys want each other to succeed. Oh, without question. And again, their chemistry. Um, and they really haven't been together that long. I know they've got a trip planned, but I know that they haven't really been together that long. And But you can see that they like each other, they care about each other. And that's the coaching staff. This is an unbelievable coaching staff. How hard is that? to coach young guys with the talent level of a Buzelis, of a Ron Holland, to buy into the team and make everyone better around them. It's an art form. And some people have it, some people don't. But it's an art form to get guys to be unselfish and to care about their teammates as much as they do their own success. And to everyone's credit with Ignite in the front office, they've recruited young players who already bought in. A put back done by Alex Sarr. Flying through, you see the athleticism. Yeah, but they've done a, Ignite has done a good job pretty much kind of containing him because he is really a force, in, especially in that tank where you don't have a dominant low post defender on the floor right now. Almanza, shot clock winding down, it's at five, goes one on one. Back door, Bazellas, he's blocked by Sarr. Blocked again by Sarr. Now he's running the break at seven feet tall behind the back. It stays with Webster, kicks out. Cotton now will reset, slowing down the pace for the Wildcats. Pulls it back. He's got it on a string. Rolls off the rim. Hacked and one. Jesse Wagstaff. Jesse Wagstaff is the ultimate veteran for the Perth Wildcats. This is his 16th season in professional basketball. Every single one of them, he has played with Perth. Six-time NBL champion. The fans go crazy for him. He's done an outstanding job. But let me tell you, that was a hard defensive stance right there by night because everybody from Perth thought that they had an open look, and they ran him off their spot. So Wagstaff completes the three-point play. Brings the Wildcats within 11 as we approach a minute to play here in this first half. Jenkins, he is being counted when he gets the ball past half court. Johnson. 
Now another steal. Here comes Perth. They've got a two on one. And Jordan Usher will be bumped and go to the free throw line. London is going to learn. It's not if, it's just when. How to create space on this dribble. When you have the basketball, you create space with your legs and your arm, your upper body and your lower body. When he starts getting strength and getting guys bumping them and they fly off of him. Remember when Scoop used to get the ball? Guys used to come in him and now all of a sudden they'd be flying across the court because he was so strong. And London will start to get that. And he's going to become better as this season goes on. So Usher goes one for two from the line. Jordan Usher is a guy who played in Turkey last season. Lit it up from beyond the arc. About 40%, and that's what caught the attention of the Wildcats. That's why he's on the roster this season. Under a minute to play here in this first half. London Johnson. You saw him going through that arm of Ty Webster, who's called for the reach in. He's continuing to attack. And he's important because as the season goes on, he's got to be the guy that gets everybody else involved. He's got to be the distributor, and then he's got to figure out after distributing when does he get he can go for his. Jenkins go inside to Amon with his back to the basket. Double teams, kick out Sané. He is blocked by Saar. Saar has been everywhere defensively. And the Wildcats on the breakout. Caught, caught in no man's land. A three second differential between shot clock and game clock. Webster, kick out, caught from straight on, left it short. Shot clock turned off, 10 seconds to play here in this first half. Usher's calling for it on the other wing. Do they see him? Cotton tries to get the contact, no call. Tipped around. That's how the first half will end. Smart defensive play that time by Ignite. Not fouling, making him take a tough shot. It was a good comeback by Perth. It looked like Ignite was trying to pull away with things. Perth defensively, a bunch of blocks by Alex Saar. They caused the turnovers, getting back to within 10 as Ignite had a 60 to 50 lead at the half. Let's send it over to Gianna Hurd now, standing by. Here with head coach Jason Hart. Jason, you guys have led in almost every statistical category most of this game. I don't know what your expectations were coming into it, but have has your team met it? Yeah, we come in to win the game, um, but we get our butts kicked on the offensive boards. And with a young team, you know, you tend to stare and watch. You know, high school, you can do that. And so that's what we got to clean up, and that's what this game is for. London Johnson, this is kind of his team. He's at the helm now. What do you think about his performance tonight? Two turnovers and not paying attention on defense, the details. So he and I play the same position, so I'm always going to be the hardest on the point guards. I'll let you get back in there, Coach. Thanks Thank so much. much. Guys, back to you. All right, Gianna, good stuff. That's why Ignite gets so many players drafted into the NBA. Jason Hart, he is tough on them, but it is tough love, and he creates better players. It is a developmental program. He makes them better. And he communicates. I mean, he's got a way of explaining things and talking to you and making you want to listen and learn instead of feeling criticized. So a 10-point lead for Ignite here in this first half. First exhibition, new roster, new team. Coach, I'd love to know your thoughts, what you've seen so much from so far from the new talent. I love the way that they play together. I love the way that they distribute the basketball, and I really love the fact that they get up and down the floor and they've gotten a lot of easy shots. I don't have a shot chart in front of me, but I will guarantee you they've got at least over half their point in transition or second shots, which you really like. So last year, this was an exhibition game with Victor Wembanyama, his team that came over from France, basically against Scoot Henderson. This year, the star for the Perth Wildcats has been Alex Saar, and he's shown flashes of why he can be a potential lottery pick. Well, he has, and he's a good player, but he hasn't dominated, you know? And I think that that's a good thing because they don't have right now, they don't have the athleticism and physical maturity on that front line. They're playing a lot of young guys, but yet they're holding their own against a guy like Star. So I think that that's a plus. This is a great test for this young NBA G League Ignite team. We are at the half. Ignite with a 60-50 lead over the Perth Wildcats. We will step aside and come back here inside the Dollar Loan Center for more action here at the half. Well, Jason has a tremendous, I mean, we keep saying it, but he has a tremendous feel for this ball club. And he's getting, he's giving them and getting them to have confidence in him because he has confidence in them.
the star of that first half for Perth Wildcats. Got to be Alex Saar. Man, he had two blocks in a row, one possession on Guzella. She shows you that length and athleticism. Here's Saar with the elbow jumper. Too strong. That's the part of his game I think that the NBA people want to watch and see. You know, he's good around the basket, finished with either hand, but that mid-range game right there is what he's got to, I think, get better with. Curling here's Jenkins. Working the two-man game with Mika stripped away there by Wagstaff. Quickly in transition, Bryce Cotton in and out. He just hasn't had the shot early on tonight. No, but he's capable at any point in time stepping up and getting it going. Ushers cross-court pass. That is picked off there by John Jenkins. John Jenkins, a former first-round pick, played his college basketball at Vanderbilt. Played in the NBA, he's played all over the world. Now his second season here with Ignite, knows his role. He's the mentor. He's here to teach the young kids, but also put the ball in the basket. Along with Eric Mika, who is hacked by Saar. You know, one of the things watching this game, Ignite, we talked about how well they were running transition. But now, this Perth team likes to run too, so they're going to have to get back and not give up easy baskets. That's a great penetration right there by, by London. He's got to come to a jump stop because people are going to jump in front of him. But that's where Mika does such a really good job, catching the basketball and finishing around the basket. Eric Mika, John Jenkins had the incredible invitation to play with the Team USA select team. They were practicing with the Team USA as they got ready for the World Cup. What an honor to be invited to practice and get ready and, and hone your skills as one of the best players in this country. The best learning experience a player can have is playing with other good players and see what makes them special. How do you stop that? The That's sky okay. hook I from mean, Alex Sorg. Very tough around the basket. There's no question with his ability to do those things. There's no question with his ability to play these things. And there's no question John Jenkins is the best shooter in the G League. How quick was that release? He is really, really a great shooter. And, you know, the thing with this ball club is it's helping him because now he's got to handle the ball a little bit more, too, so it's not just catch and shoot. Saar from deep. Nothing but net. Now, if he starts to do that, that's a whole different level there. London Johnson trying to get downhill, the fadeaway. That's what I want to see. That's what you want to see. You want to see him use his body, get the way he wants to get, then raise up and finish. Webster from the wing, his three off the mark. Offensive rebound, another one kept alive by Wagstaff. Underneath, Usher, kick out, Saar puts it on the floor, stripped out of bounds by Johnson off of his knee. Turnover to Ignite. Johnson did a smart play that time. As soon as he got around him, he reached for the ball and, put, and kicked, it, made him kick it off his knee. So this is the same starting five for Ignite that started the game. Holland, Johnson, Buzelis, Jenkins, and Mika. So you've got two veterans in Mika and Jenkins, a second-year pro in Johnson, who's the second year with Ignite, and two first-year prospects in Buzelis and Holland, who are projected to go one and two in the upcoming NBA draft. Now, I say upcoming, and it's a long time away in 2024, but those are the early predictions. It is, but I, I, I like what I'm seeing on the floor right now. Johnson got challenged. He came right at him because this is a prologue for what's going to happen the rest of the year with, with London. They want to want to see how tough he is with bringing the ball up. When you have... John, when you have that many weapons in the half court, you've got to try to eliminate them getting the ball where they want to get it and how they want to get it. So what do you do? You put tremendous pressure on the point guard. And that's what London has to show. I can handle that. He's also been more vocal. Yes. Calling out, pointing things out, making sure guys are in the right spots. Holland, another block by Saar. I keep it. The shot clock winding down. It's at five. Buzelis finishes with two hands. Now he's starting to put his position on this game. Now he's starting to put his position on this team. Usher inside the offensive glass. The Wildcats have been keeping possessions alive. A third opportunity, that one goes, and Jason Hart not happy about the rebounding effort for his team. Now you have to rebound the ball better. Look for him to come in maybe with a little bit more size. 
that's one of the things the young guys have to learn the physicality now at this level. A timeout on the floor as Jason Hart, head coach for Ignite, talks things over with his guys. What's the key to get young guys to get in there on the glass and become better rebounders? Have the bench talk to them. Bring them over, sit them down, and let them visit with the bench. And they can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the bench. And then all of a sudden, be amazed what that bench can say to you. That's one of those coaching savvy folks right there. You don't need a name to say anything. Just sit here, talk to your friend, get used to it. If you rebound like that, you guys are going to become best buds and all like that. So just, you know, plan your Saturday nights. We've talked about the position Jason Hart has. So many different things he has to do as the coach. He's the recruiter. He's the developer. He also has to try and win these ball games. But early on, he's letting guys make mistakes and figure things out for themselves and not try to overcoach here, especially with this exhibition game. Well, you know, he doesn't come at them with bad intentions. And I think that's the most important thing. I think you can make a point and do it without having bad intentions. He's not, he doesn't yell at them like that. He doesn't berate them. He doesn't, you know, he, he, he explains things to them and then they kind of work the thing that they need to work on. You see what the answer is? Your man Sané comes in the game. And now you talk about some physicality. So Guzelis will take a seat on the bench as Babacar Sané will come in. He joins the five of London Johnson, Ron Holland, Eric Mika, and John Jenkins. When you play any top club, from around the world. You know they're going to be physical. You know they're going to rebound. They do all the dirty work. And so now Ignite has to see if they can match that level of intensity on the glass. Here's Holland. Off the window, the quick move over the arms of Saar. Okay, but now Holland's a, a first-year guy. He comes right in, he takes the bump and finishes at the rim. That's, that's you can tell, his level of maturity and his level of ability. Usher lost the handle. Holland now has the steal. And he was bumped by Usher in transition. How is the soul always? You know, and he does certain things. You know, you know, great players, John, do things that you can't coach. So when you're looking at players to see how good they are, you look and say, it does, is, is he doing something that we really, it's hard to teach or we can't teach? And that's how you start to to separate levels of players. You know, Holland told me what he loves about basketball so much. When he's on the court, nothing in life even matters. He said he just kind of goes into his happy place. And he grew up playing so many different sports. But it was his eighth grade year when he realized he could really make something of himself in this basketball world. And talking to head coach Jason Hardy, he said, you know, he's a guy who did not really specialize early on. He played other sports. Now that he's getting these specialized training, Jason Hart feels like Ron Holland has the biggest upside because he now is in a developing situation where he's going to get the coaching every single day. Without question, he's a talent. And I tell you, where he grew up in Duncanville, there's been a lot of outstanding athletes. Um, Texas is loaded with uh, multi-sport athletes. And there's a real level of expectation, especially in Duncanville High School, because they had had so many really fine players out of there. 16-point lead for Ignite here in this third quarter. They're doubling Cotton every time, so he's got to give it up. Here's Usher through the legs. A tough shot. It's just a two, not a three. But that's okay. That was a really tough shot. That was good defense. London Johnson the other way from the corner off the mark. Holland gets his nose in there, but he is called for the foul on the rebound. But that's okay. Jason Hart will live with that one. You know. You like that kind of effort, John. The shot stop, you know, on the open floor. A guy goes and gets it and tries to rebound out of his area. 
you encourage that. You know, no matter if foul was called, you you clap. Even though he gave up the foul, he stays on the floor to your point because Jason Hart likes the effort. There's the veteran play by Jesse Wagstaff, and he draws another foul. That one's on Holland. He's got to move his feet on that. See, he was perfect until he swiped down at the basketball. Wagstaff in his 16th professional season. They got some veteran guys now that they're playing against. I mean, so th this Ignite is going against a, a really smart basketball. Jeremy Pargo, another one of the veterans back on the floor. And a turnover there. Cotton comes away with it. He stood up by Holland, and Holland strips it away. <laughs> Jenkins, he'll line up a deep one, in and out. Tipped out by Almanza. Here comes Cotton. Outlet pass up ahead to Usher. What a dime from Cotton. That's a veteran move right there. Great push out. You gotta be looking at the scoreboard now if you're ignite. I mean, you played pretty well. And you're only up 10. Here's Babakar Sane up against Saar on the offensive glass, puts it in. You wanna settle in, you need about three or four really good defensive stops right now. I talked to some scouts before the game. They know Babakar Sane's name. They saw him last year, weren't sure, but what they saw to him in practice on Tuesday, they said, okay. We're going to keep watching this young guy. Oh, he can play. There's Almanza. As Saar on his pip, so he decides to take it out. Holland, he's directing traffic. <laughs> Gets by his man. It's just too easy. Nobody can stay in front of Ron Holland. But he thinks like a score. I mean, you know, he's not asking permission. He says, give me the ball. Let me, let, let me do what I do. Ben Henschel, another good young looking player for the Perth Wildcats, has some quality minutes. Puts that in for two and cuts the lead to 12. Sané lets it fly from deep and knocks down the three. All those guys who put out a mocked NBA draft and don't have Babaka Sané's name on it, shame on you. You do not know what you're doing. There's Henschel again, this time from deep. Well, one teaching point out of this game is going to be defense and defensive rotation. They've given up a lot of open shots. I think part of Perth's game plan is to get physical with the young guys and try to see if you can get them flustered. And so far, they have really kept their composure and they've not gotten out of the game plan. Coach really also wanted to make sure he doubled everything in the post, wanted the guys make sure, that, to your point, not let them get comfortable on their offensive sets. And Ignite, they've been getting lit defensively and they've had to make quick decisions. And when the speed of the game is a lot quicker than the high school game, now all of a sudden it gets a lot faster. Without question, and I think that they've handled it pretty good. I mean, and a lot of it has come from the fact that, that they've communicated well with each other and they've tried to make the extra pass. And Pargo has come in and done a great job with the second unit. You know, Pargo's a legend in Chicago now. He is a legend. Almanza, he's got eight points. He's the prospect out of Spain. Corey Webster rises up with a hand in his face, knocks it down. You said he was a professional scorer. That's what he yes, does. He That's what that man does. You know, you have a special eye for shooters. You know, you got to start your own shooting academy. I mean, I'm just telling you. I like guys who can shoot <laughs> and guys who can rise up. Wildcats, they get the ball back down by 11, under five minutes to play here in this third quarter. Here's Webster again. He just hit a three. 
And his free throw jumper in and out. Sané with the blow by, takes the bump and finishes, and then barks at his man. <laughs> Babacar Sané, I think he'll be on some draft boards pretty soon. Physically, he's so strong, and he's so young. And it, it, when the guy is that strong, he doesn't really understand. Like last year, he didn't understand how strong he was, you know, and he didn't understand his capability of doing so many different things. I mean, look at this play that, from Sané. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's like a fly on him. I mean, you know, get out of the way. <laughs> Sané, six foot six. He's now 233 pounds. And in the open floor, you better watch out. And he can shoot the ball. He can shoot, he can but he can also it, he put can it on his head. Here's Tyler Smith now, and he's got that smooth lefty jumper. I mean, it's just effortless when he rises up. I like him. And, and Jason likes his post guy to operate from the elbows. And Smith looks like he's a guy that can really play well from the elbows because he can shoot it, pass it, and drive it. And guess who, guess who got drafted doing that? Mr. Miller. That's right. Mr. Double Double, Leonard Miller. He is going to have an outstanding NBA career. Here's Pargo, protects the ball, finishes with the right. He's good. I'm telling you. I used to go to Chicago when they used to play in the summer league, and uh, he used to always have a crowd when he played. The magician with the ball. Here comes Smith. Tries to keep it alive, went off the hands of Webster. So it stays with Ignite. You know, talking about the veterans here for Ignite, Jason Hart wants them to score. He doesn't want them to just defer to the young guys. He said, if you've got it, you better shoot the ball. We want to always put pressure on the defense. That time, Smith, though, he had a little too much sugar on that one. He thought he had to do it to regularly dribble the ball. He had to go behind his back. He did that for you, John, to show you. Sometimes we like a little style points, you know? <laughs> Got to figure out what works and what doesn't at this That's level, right? Fargo throws it up. Sané got bumped. He was looking for the whistle. No call. Harris denied by Gilder. See, with Fargo and Gilder on the floor, you got two veteran guards. Big time situations. Every time the Wildcats try to cut into the lead, Ignite, they have had the answer. Ignite with a 15-point lead. Ron Holland II, 16 points to go along with four rebounds. John Jenkins leading the way in scoring. He's got 17 points for the Perth Wildcats. It's Alex Saar leading the way. He's got 13 points, six rebounds, five blocks. And Jordan Usher also contributing with 12 points. Here's the breakout. Ethan Almansa. Finishes and one. He is really deceptive with his ability, John, to handle the basketball and to make basketball decisions. And that time he made a steal, but he didn't try to speed dribble it. He dribbled it where he could control it and finish it at the rim. Talking to scouts, the reason why everyone's so high on Ethan Almanza, he's kind of a throwback big. He's not trying to be the new age big where you go out and shoot threes and put up. He knows what he is, and what he is is a strong player at the rim and does it well. And there's Sané, put another one in. Biggest lead of the game for Ignite. And they're looking for more. Almanza, look at those long steps and the touch. He's skilled. I mean, he know he know he knows his game, and you know it's going to be interesting. Again, this is just the first game, but he doesn't seem like he tries to do things he can't do. Alonso with the rebound. He's everywhere right now. Argo with the crossover. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? You know, one of the things Coach Hart talked about in practice was spacing. And I love the spacing that this Ignite team is playing with. And that's why they're getting easier shots. 
under two minutes to play here in this third quarter as Saar is getting ready to check back in for the Wildcats. Offensive rebound again by Herschel. And put in Jack Andrew. Well, if you're at night, you've got to love the effort, especially by the second unit. The first unit got you the lead, but they have continued to add to it, up by 21 right now. As David Oquera takes it away for Perth and is draws the foul. Yeah, they, they they playing like a team. I mean, they really. They, when I say that, they play with purpose. As a team, I know my role. I know where I'm supposed to be. I know how I'm supposed to do stuff, and that's and that's what I do. That's one of the few turnovers that they've had today. Think about that, John. We really haven't seen a whole lot of turnovers out of this team at night team when they have so many new players. No, we have not. Travel called against Saar. Under a minute to play here in the third. Ignite's been around for four seasons now. And this is just the second season where they're going to play a full G League schedule where they will have the opportunity to make the playoffs if they qualify. Good block there by Oquera. And the ball gets turned over to the Wildcats. There's so much talent. This team feels like they can make the playoffs, something Ignite has never done. Well, I, I think, and this is going to sound silly, considering all the guys that have been drafted, but I think this might be the deeper team that they've had. Without question. And you say, well, how can you say that when they've had so many first-round draft choices? But, you know, it's just the other guys are now more mature. And um, the second unit has played extremely well. There's Sané from the wing, off the mark, rebounded by Almanza. Got to get it up. Pargo, one second. He sees the clock. And it doesn't fall. Monza with a big time offensive rebound, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's not that he's, he's not an overpower guy, but he uses his quickness and basketball savvy. He's picked up two or three offensive rebounds there to really help him. Both have 12. And that's what I'm talking about the balance across the board. I think that kind of balance makes them a better basketball team. Defensively, I thought they'd done a pretty good job, John. There's been no real breakdowns. Or they went through that one spurt where they didn't get a defensive rebound, and Coach solved that by going to the bench. Saar beats the shot clock. Another deep shot. We knew he was athletic. We knew he was a rim protector, but he's shown the outside touch. Without question, if he can do that, then he becomes a very special talent. Zealous, right back at him. I'm telling you, with the ex offensive explosion and the talent on this team, he's going to become better and better as this season progresses, as he sees some of these other guys step up and get out of their comfort zone. Aguera couldn't finish out the rim. Here comes Sané pushing the pace. Doesn't have numbers, lost it out of bounds. It didn't matter. He, he wasn't counting. He was just trying to get to the rim. <laughs> well, that hard. was not it's a hard. mathematical it's hard to count. test. It's hard to count red jerseys when you just see <laughs> that, the orange rim. That's that's why he couldn't handle the ball. All he saw was the rim. Oguera, he finishes with Buzelis on his hip. I like David Oquera. Young kid, 20 years old, local from Perth. He's had some flashes. Yeah, he's going to be a factor for the Wildcats. Here's Buzelis, catch and shoot, knocking it down. That's two in a row. That's what he does. Also got to remember, these young prospects, they were the go-to player on all of their teams growing up. Now they're on a team where they 
don't have to be the man every single night. What does that do to a young star? Okay, no, you don't. But you also, but you have to bring your moxie every game. You got to bring that confident level, that confidence level, every ball game. And I think the better players, the great players, the first round draft choices, those guys bring that level of confidence. Nice job boxing out by Ignite there. Everybody's sealing off, but they weren't able to corral the ball. Yeah, but, but they're getting more physical. I mean, you know, you can tell. These kids like to compete. I mean, you can tell that they've got a DNA where they don't mind bumping bodies. Is that one of those things where you either like it or you don't? You can't Without really question. teach a kid to be physical? Without question, you know. You, you can't make a dog a kitten. We can't make a kitten a dog. I mean, you know, you gotta, you you are what you are. I mean, and, and it's just, you, know, you gotta figure that out in recruiting and, you know, and go from there. Can't make a kitten a dog. No, you can't do it. I'm gonna have to use that one at some point. <laughs> it only took me two years to bring that out on you, see? <laughs> So Gilder, the only veteran on the floor there with Tyler Smith rising up. His shot no good. Almanza, another offensive rebound. Gilder's on the floor with Almanza in the post. Fuzel is calling for it, but Almanza finishes. That's where he lives in the paint. Yeah, but that's what he does. He's really smart, you know? He didn't just get in and try to quick shoot it. He got it. He, he kind of knew where the defense was before he got the ball. So therefore, he was able to go into his offensive progression from there. And that's why I'm saying he has a really good basketball IQ. Even though Gilder's considered the veteran, he's still a very young guy, a young pro. So Jason Hart doesn't like to put him in that veteran spot. As Buzelis couldn't handle it out of bounds off Ignite. So Buzelis on the floor with Almanza, Gilder, Smith, and Babakar Sané. You're sorry. He's been aggressive. He has. What I've been impressed with is his ability to play outside the paint. I mean, you know, coming in and watching some tape and talking to some people, I was expecting a guy that was going to go block to block, and he hasn't really. He's not done that. He's gone up to the high post. He's gone to the elbows. He's been able to put the ball on the floor. There you see him right there and try to finish at the rim, and that's impressive. With his body, it's going to be hard for him just to go block to block. And that's the NBA game right there. Pick and roll. The point guard delivers you. How do you finish through contact? And now... The officials are going to come over to the monitor. It was called a common foul. You got to wonder if they're going to see if there was anything extra. Was Saar hit above the shoulder and the neck area that could potentially escalate this above a common foul? There's very few people that were on the floor that could jump that high to get him above the neck. I mean, you know, he explodes. I don't think it was just a basket. It looked on the neck and eye without I mean, It was just a basketball play. Even though there's an exhibition, the officials in the G League, they're all still training, learning. They want to get to the NBA level. They so everyone doing their due diligence. And see, and see your opinion. I mean, they don't you know, care what when, I think. They say, we wait, games, we got Coach come over in the house. Want to come over here we had the Perry Clark, uh, who turned around Tulane, who uh, went to Miami, who can get any NBA executive on the phone. Uh, Let's go to break. <laughs> Harry Clark said it. Ignite with a big lead here in the fourth. We'll be back after this. We thank you for joining us here in this exhibition between NBA G League Ignite and the Perth Wildcats. Special shout out to the Red Army. Waking up early, watching all the way back in Perth. I know they've got to love their young talent, especially Alex Saar, who's at the line. So during the break, the officials went to the monitor. They confirmed just a common foul. So Saar is at the line shooting two after missing that first. And during the break, they check with you to make sure you approve of that. You gave the nod, too, so, you know. 30 years of coaching, they never asked my opinion, nor did they listen to it. But London Johnson back in running the point. Ignite running an inside-outside offense right now. 
Sané. Pump fake. Gets to the paint. Raises out the rim. Buzelis has to like, look at the shot clock. It's down to two. Got to get it up. It's a deep two. No good. See, on, in that possession, Buzelis looked at the rim at the last minute. Well, he's going to learn the minute he catches the basketball, look at the rim. And by looking at the rim, he's going to see such a good offensive player. He's going to create other situations for other players. Jason Hart telling his point guard, London Johnson. Some instructions as he dribbles it up the floor. Trying to set up Mika on the block. Too many red jerseys in there, but Smith gets it back and he ends it in. See, Smith and Holland, what I've seen out of them today is they don't let any breakdowns or something go wrong stop them from playing. You know, if a mistake is made, they don't stop playing. And so, therefore, they're able to make up for it and cover it. Travel call against Ty Webster. So Ignite's got the big lead up by 22, 7.15 to play here in this fourth. Being that this is the first exhibition game, what do you want to see out of these final seven minutes on the floor out of the Ignite? Well, I want to see us do what we have taught or what I'm going to emphasize for the rest of the year. I want to start that path. Whatever that may be, I want to see us lock in that and start focusing and establishing our identity doing those things. Active hands tipped away by Webster. They give it back to him on the break, and he lost the handle turnover. And I'm not not trying to answer your question, but I just think that it, whatever uh, Jason is trying to feel like this group will be good at and trying to do, I'm trying to get that philosophy across. We're up. Now we have to play the game the way I want it played with this group. Were you ever a politician? <laughs> Only when I start working with you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most diplomatic answer I've ever heard. I like that. But it Mika, really, but it really team. is the true answer. Sar, he's now running the bait. Break pricks up his dribble. Another offensive rebound, this time for Harris. And a three ball goes for Bryce Cotton. I mean, it may be, you know, I want I want London to show, you know, some things at the point. I want him to run this team, you know. I may want, you know, I, I, I've got my three new guys on the floor. I may want them now to show how they can play together and move without the basketball and get them easy looks. Uh, you know, it may be I want to become better defensively with this lineup. I'm tall, I'm athletic, and how I'm going to rotate. So whatever it may be right now that, he wants to make a point of doing, he's got an opportunity to do it. Zellis showing the handles, gives it up to Johnson, the point guard. Pull up in the paint. There's the decision making that they want to see. Without what, and, and, and that's what, you know, for them to be as good as they can be, it's going to be important for him to be able to do that. And by doing that, I mean getting in the paint, distributing, or scoring and reading the defense that way to see what he needs to do in that possession. So Usher and O'Quarrick will come back in for the Wildcats, replacing Saar and Webster. That was one of the few times you saw in that possession where a knight got really exposed by penetration off the ground. Yeah. I think they've done a good job with Cotton and keeping him on the perimeter and not letting him overly penetrate and create easy opportunities. Look at Holland getting it back. He's got numbers, takes it himself, and he will draw the foul. Ron Holland, you, you could just tell you he was speed? not going to be denied. I mean, you know, it's like you, he took it personal when he got it stripped away the first time. Yeah, but you don't hear guys talk about ball speed a lot until you see guys with with it. He's got really great ball speed. Seeing Holland play now live <laughs> and in person, is it understandable now why he's projected as a top three pick? I 
I can understand it. I still, it's, you know, I think that's a lot to put on guys. I mean, you know, the season hasn't started, and you're saying, okay, you're going to be a third pick, so where do you go? But damn, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it mentally being able to have, that's why I have so much respect for Scoot. I just thought, and, you know, we saw it firsthand. Uh, just to his maturity, his mental toughness, his personality, and how he handled last year. He was a complete gentleman. He was a competitor. I mean, you know, he was a very, very special player. Ignite has never seen anyone like Scoot Henderson. Being in the program for two years, he was able to sit back year one and then develop, turn into the leader that he was in year two. I cannot wait to see what he does in the NBA with the Trailblazers. There's Buzelis, finishes with the left and one. You know, and, again, and, and, and I like this young man. I mean, and, and he started like, uh, he started with more questions. Now he's giving them answers. You know, when he was playing, he was kind of looking around. Can I do this? Can I do that? Now look at that drive. He finishes. You know, he's under control. You know, it's no celebration. Like, boy, I'm just happy I did this. He's walking with some confidence. I like that. And he gets the block on the other end. You know, one of the young people, we talk about Stu, you know, one of the guys that helped in his development said one of the things is Stu, when you got to the world and sister and seven people in the house, you really don't have to develop a whole lot of social skills because all the activity you need is right there. You know, and now he gets out in the world and all like that, but he has really blossomed, and I think a lot of that has to do with the program here at night and how they've handled him. You gotta, you gotta credit his parents. His yeah, parents. That's what he said. He said with seven right. people in the house. Correct. You know, you can create enough activity and interaction that you don't need to go out and find friends and find things to do. And the parents have done a tremendous job with him. I think Smith's been impressive. I think I think most of all the new guys have been impressive. I think Sane has been impressive coming off the bench. Webster, pump fake, stuck in the paint. Finds the kick out to Usher. Shot clock at three. His shot left it short. Strong rebound by Smith. Now it's tipped away. Usher gets a lineup. Another three ball. This time he makes some pay. Man, look at this group that's on the floor right now. All of these kids could be playing in college. If this was a college team, they would be a top ten college team. I mean, maybe top five. I mean, just think about that. I mean, that's how young this group is. Allen trying to set up his man, gets downhill high off the glass. He continues his scoring streak, leading everybody with 22 points now. We've talked about some of the veteran pieces that Ignite have this season with Eric Mika, John Jenkins coming back. You've got Admon Gilder along with Jeremy Pargo, a guy who is not playing tonight who we hope to see at some point soon, David Stockton. He lit Ignite up when he played them last season. Yes, he did. 19 assists, setting the G League record. Jason Hart said, oh, that opened our eyes when we asked him if he wanted to be a part of this, and he said yes. He goes, oh, yeah. It was because of that game, 19 assists. So he's another one of those veterans who's going to help point guards like London Johnson develop his game. And that's the other thing. I think, you know, and you have been far more involved in all the G League activities and, and arenas and all, but I think this is a beautiful environment. It's a beautiful place. And teams come in here, and I think they really want to play well. I mean, the talent on this floor right now. Throws it up, Boquera. Finish off the alley-oop. But teams come in here and they want to play well. Oh, I mean, you know, they want to stay. But well, y'all live at large. I mean, you know, we want to show you that we're pretty good, too. Third personal on Jordan Usher, the third team foul. Under three minutes to play here in the ball game. How do you feel, John, to come in here and say, well, I'm playing for a transfer? <laughs> D 
this idea, this philosophy, this thought by the NBA, I think is really taking root and uh, has really been a successful endeavor. Usher, spin move, off the contact, Allen's pretty. He's always could play. I mean, he, he, Usher could always score. Zealous crossover behind the back, a little too many moves, lost it. But Holland gets the steal. Ignite with numbers, a four on two break. Buzelis throws it down. The Holland Buzelis connection. We're going to see that a lot this season. But they like playing with each other. I mean, and that's the play. I mean, he was just as excited about making that pass as he was about making his baskets. Michael Harris, the three for the answer for the Wildcats. Remember, this is a Wildcat team that still has a roster spot open. They can have one more import. They can bring in another American player. So people seeing this team on national TV, they may want to be a part of this and sign up to play in the NBL in Perth, Australia. The kick out to Usher, left alone, makes some pay. Another three ball goes. Like you asked earlier, what would Jason like to see with this group? I think he had seen something that he that he can build upon. They really like to play with each other. They share the basketball. Sané stepped out of bounds, so a turnover. With a big lead and young guys, there's been absolutely nothing selfish. You see them talking to each other and and cheering each other on and all. I mean, certainly he would want to see that. And again, this group could play in college. I mean, I mean, and, and if they were playing in college, they would definitely be the top ten basketball. Now you know they win the national championship. <laughs> Oquera finds himself all alone, puts it in for two. I gotta walk into some gyms in the fall. In the fall, I'm not, you know, but this would definitely be. I mean, these guys can really play. Allen runs over the defender, offensive foul. He is fearless with the basketball, though. I mean, you know, he, he, you know. <laughs> He gets a crack and he thinks he can get to the basket and he plays with such an energy level. <laughs> so I apologize, they called it a block on the floor, not a charge. So Perth calls a timeout. They want to challenge that. 